If I asked you for the time, you could probably tell me in seconds because we all carry around one of these within reach, which is the reason why I no longer wear a wristwatch. But there's something I really like about a wall clock. These make a nice wall decoration. They can even be a work of art. And you can turn just about anything into a clock using a small mechanism like this. So guess what happens when you combine junk with a clock mechanism? You're about to find out. You probably already read the title of this video, so it should come as no surprise that I'm about to make a wall clock out of old license plates. But what if you want to make one of these clocks right now and you just don't have access to any old license plates? Well, you can purchase license plate metal numbers from Hobby Lobby at a reasonable price. I like to use original, but these will work as well. You can also buy them online from their website. I bought these at an estate sale for a buck a piece. I got enough of them so I'd have all the numbers I need for the clock face. In order to cut the numbers perfectly straight, I was gonna use my new metal cutting saw, which actually worked, but not quite as good as you might expect. Now this saw can cut a three inch piece of steel, but when I used it on the plates, I was a little surprised that it left the edges a little jagged. So I switched over to the simplest tool, tin snips. These were able to cut fast, clean, and straight. For the backdrop of my clock, I'm going to use an old Illinois map I got from my friend Dan. Looks like it has a couple of stains on it, but that's what I like. After all, this is Alley Picked. After laying out all the numbers for what I consider a good sized clock, I need to cut a circle using this cool compass. Just a little test here to be sure everything will fit as expected. Instead of placing the plate numbers directly onto the map, I thought it would look a lot nicer if I mounted them first on a piece of wood the same size. Whatever. For the clock mechanism, I'm shopping at Hobby Lobby. I need to get a mechanism with a shaft length appropriate for my clock. I also need to buy some large clock hands. The ones that come with the mechanism, well, they're just too small. Mounting the quartz mechanism is a little trickier than I first expected. I don't want the back of the mechanism touching the wall. And to solve this problem, I'm going to do two things. First of all, I'll cut a square into the back about 3 16ths of an inch deep. The second thing I'll do so that the back of the mechanism won't touch the wall is to cut a circular 3 inch wide ring around the back of the clock. The back of this ring will lay flat against the wall and not the clock mechanism.
Here's a trick I learned some years back. After gluing down the paper, the best way to remove the excess is with sandpaper. It makes a nice clean edge. For mounting the numbers, I don't want to put a nail or screw through the face of the plate. Instead, I'll screw the wood back into the clock face, then using adhesive I can glue the plates to the pieces of wood. 